Hello and welcome to Wednesday in the Word with Roger and Cheryl. We want to talk to you today about some very important things. And uh, we're going to talk out of, out of the book of uh, 1 John. Uh, begin with the first verse there and we'll go through the chapter if we can. Uh, but we welcome you today. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes and, and into your lives today because uh, we believe that we're one in the Lord. If you're part of the body of Christ, if you're born again, we're one in the Lord. And, and God's brought us together for such a time as this. And we believe that God wants to speak to us. God wants to do some uh, special things in our life and in our uh, in our ministries, in our families, in, uh, uh, in our churches all over the world. God desires to move uh, in the earth and to display His uh, uh, name uh, in the earth that we, you and I, can be a part of what He is doing uh, in the earth today. Uh, Cheryl, it's good to be on with the people today, and uh, thank you for being on with me. And let's let's open up with prayer and and just ask God to to move and touch our uh, audience today, touch us today, and let's let God uh, be God in our lives. Amen. Those of us that are born again feel that oneness and that united with Him. So let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus today, as we come and Cheryl and I come together in agreement. Uh, with the body of Christ here today, we ask God that our uh, you use our lips, these lips of clay, use our mind, our uh, e everything about us, God, just as part of your, an anointed vessel that can touch uh, and can change people's lives, Father. <clears throat> we pray, God, that this uh, word that we are going to share today, God, would stir in the people's hearts, and God, that you would do some special things. Uh, in the body and in the in the people of God. And God, we give you thanks. We give you praise for salvation, for healing, for deliverance uh, in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cheryl, I want you to greet the people before we start, and we'll... Uh... <laughs> well, hello, everybody. And we're glad you've joined us. I know that God has something to say to us today, so we're going to turn our ears on and our hearts open to understand. And... Um, not just leave it there, but meditate on what God has to say. And we need changes in our life. We need changes in America. We need changes in the earth as a whole. And we need the glory Amen. of God to fill the earth as He has promised. So um, He said He would fill the earth with His glory and He would fill the earth with the knowledge of His glory. So knowledge is a beginning point. So let's listen to what God has to say today. We're going to go back, and we're, we're, we've come to the end of 2020, and some of you will say, thank God, because of everything that's went on. Uh, but it has nothing to, all, everything that's went on has nothing to do with the year. But we're, I look specifically, uh, whenever I think of time, I, I look at the timing of God. Uh, you know, many times we uh, try to go from year to year and thinking, what well, this, maybe this year will be better or whatever. But we are in the holiday season, by the way, tomorrow. Uh, is Thanksgiving Day, and we want to wish you a very uh, happy Thanksgiving. We pray that the the very spirit of the the first Thanksgiving of that uh, thankfulness that they experienced there uh, in in America, and it's, I know this is just a holiday in in America, but everybody all the way around the world should be thankful for something, and we're thankful. I'm thankful to be able to come to you today and to share the Word of God. I'm thankful. Uh, today that, that God burns bright in my spirit and in my heart and that <clears throat> that desire to reach out uh, and touch the world is uh, is so much bigger than any one of our agendas. It's, it's bigger than our, our agendas uh, spiritually or socially or uh, politically, any other thing. It's bigger than that. Uh, but one thing the Lord has been dealing with me about as we go into 2020, is that many times we have forgotten the fundamentals of our our salvation. The fundamentals, those, those of us that consider ourselves uh, kingdom preachers, and I believe Jesus was a kingdom preacher. The scripture says he preached the kingdom of God. And uh, those of us that consider ourselves uh, kingdom, many times we have gotten away from the foundations. I, I've seen so many, even ministries, uh, that have brought confusion because they themselves uh, have left the foundations 
of what the Word of God teaches and what the Word of God says. So as we come into uh, 2021, I want to be uh, begin to, and even now, even before then, I want to begin to uh, review again uh, the, the fundamentals of the kingdom of God, the fundamentals of uh, salvation. Uh, you know, many times uh, there are those that, that, that believe they've outgrown salvation, they've outgrown their accountability, uh, maybe to, to even God. But I want to tell you, uh, none of us, saved or unsaved, are outside of the accountability uh, to a true and a living God. Uh, you know, He is King of kings and Lord of lords. So all power uh, in the earth is subject unto His name. And, and that's another message, but uh, that's some of the fundamentals that we need to remember and we need to know. Uh, going into 1 John, the first chapter, uh, it starts out, That which we uh, was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Now, what the, the way he says things here is very important to, to the meaning of what's being said. Uh, first of all, he says, uh, that which was from the beginning. I want to look back, Cheryl, at, at what was from the beginning, some things uh, that, that were established from the beginning. Uh, you know, many times we, we want to stray or people want to stray or different doctrines want to stray from uh, the things that were established at the beginning. Uh, so they're, they're very important. The, the law of first mention many times is uh, ignored in our doctrines and we ignore uh, things that are uh, pertaining to life, pertaining to godliness. Uh, so we want to uh, look at that. And he says... Uh, which we have heard, that means, you know, there, there are some, some things about being an eyewitness. I think about this when I read the scripture. I think uh, 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 John here is talking about being an eyewitness or, uh, or, or uh, first-hand hearing of what, what was said about the word of life. Uh, and he says, which we have seen. The word seen here, uh, let me give you some of the definition out of the Strong's Concordance. Um, that I looked up on my Bible program, uh, which is BibleSoft, and it says uh, part of it is to discern clearly, physically or mentally, by extension to uh, attend to, uh, to experience passively or, uh, and, and then the, the final words that has been translated, behold, proceed, see, take, uh, take heed. So, uh, Whenever we have heard something, we become responsible for it. When we have heard uh, what what the Word of God is saying to us, uh, then we become responsible for it. John takes ownership. He takes responsibility now of what he has heard, what he has seen. You know, many times I, I find it alarming uh, that Christians today uh, think, well, you know, the, I, I read that in the Word of God, but does it really mean that, you know? And there's something about uh, things like, well, let's just take the, the things with, about thou shalt not kill. Uh, you say, well, that was Old Testament, uh, you know, or, and thou shalt not commit adultery and those things. So I said, well, that's Old Testament. But Jesus, uh, in the New Testament, it turns around and says, uh, no murder will enter into the kingdom of God. So we, we have to know and understand that those things, some things are uh, an eternal uh, uh, law of God, not just the law of Moses, but the law of God. Uh, so uh, I wasn't there as a physical witness to see Jesus, to hear His words, uh, but I am a witness. I have seen and I have heard the Word of God. How did I do that? I heard it by discerning, by, by, by first of all, listening to the Word of God, reading the Word of God. Uh, today, we have programs even on our phone that we can listen. I can start uh, at, at Genesis and let it it'll read all the way through Revelation if I want to. Uh, I, I have this book that I pick up and, and I read in it, in it and find 
uh, life and those things that pertain to life. I also find warnings, I find corrections, I find things that uh, cause me uh, to understand what God uh, desires from me and, and how to walk. So um, as we can begin to come to a conclusion of 2020, and into 2021, I don't have, I mean, I don't know what God will speak to me between now and then, but I do know this, that God said a return to the fundamentals has to come uh, to us uh, as far as those of us that believe uh, kingdom and that, that we preach the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, the scripture says, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Actually, John Baptist, whenever he said, about Jesus, and I know we've said this before, but we're, we're talking about returning to the fundamentals, and we're going to begin to dig in here and pull out uh, some some fundamental beliefs about the kingdom of God. Now, uh, you know, I know many says, well, let's go deeper, let's go deeper. Well, uh, a friend of mine last week uh, posted uh, something about, uh, about not looking to go into something new, but looking to walk in what's already been preached. And I, I believe that. I believe that uh, I want God to enable us uh, to walk in what God's already revealed to us, what we have, uh, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, uh, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. See, whenever we, we, we pick up this book, whenever we... Uh, whenever we handle right now, we are handling a very important word of life. We're not just um, haphazardly coming to you saying, "Well, we're going to say something that sounds good that can uh, that, that can uh, you know tickle people's ears, if you will." But we want to say something that's full of life. That we've handled the word of life. Now, I want you to get that word. It says, "Word of life." Uh, Jesus came that we might have life. So we want to look deeper into the word of life. We want to look deeper into the fundamentals that Jesus brought concerning the word of life. Uh, amen. Any, anything you want to jump in here with? Uh, verse 2 says, for the, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. Now there's that word seen it again. We have discerned it. We have perceived it. We uh, you know, what do you see? What do you see? You know, it's easy if we look all around us in the world uh, that we see death, that we see uh, destruction, that we hear lies, that we hear uh, things that are, uh, that are detrimental to our uh, walk with God. But I want you to know something. The Scripture tells us that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Whenever there are spirits that come at us, accusing us, trying to pull us down uh, into a lesser level, into a level where that we're not walking in victory, we're not walking in the power of God, uh, then that's not the Spirit of God. But he says, for, our, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it. Uh, we have to go to, to, to really connect with that. We have to go back, another uh, writing by John, we have to go back to uh, the, the, the Gospel of John, uh, where he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Uh, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And it goes on to say that uh, we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Now, how are we going to see that? Well, we've got to discern, we've got to look, we've got to see, we've got to hear, we've got to handle the Word of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So now, as you and I approach our relationship with God, and hold on with me because we're going to get uh, even deeper into that. As uh, we approach our relationship with God, then we must uh, discern uh, who Jesus is because without Jesus, the gospel is dead. The gospel is of none effect. Uh, it's not about uh, how well... Uh, the, the, the preacher preaches or how uh, how charismatic they are is whether it's the word of life or not. Um, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you uh, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. Say that with me. Was manifest unto us. Thank God He manifests 
uh, He manifests the Son unto us. He manifests the life unto us uh, now that we can see the life of God that is uh, openly and avail uh, 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 readily available to us. Uh, ver chapter, verse 3 says, uh, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Now, let me encourage you, ministers, let me encourage you, uh, if you're just a lay person and, and just a witness uh, in your home, if you're a father or mother, witness and let, let your children hear uh, what the Word of God says. Let your uh, families, your extended families, let the people around you hear what the Word of God says. Uh, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. It's time to declare, church. It's time to open our mouths and begin to declare the Word of the Lord, begin to declare the things of God in the earth. Uh, that which we have, uh, have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship. Now I want you to, to, to take hold of this word of fellowship here because um, I want you to understand what that's talking about. It's not just co coming together and, and just having a good meal together. Now, you know, somebody said, well, that's the, best, that, that's the best way to have fellowship. Well, that's the best way for us to have uh, you know, uh, social relationships, I guess. Uh, but, but we're talking about fellowship. Uh, fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship, now watch this, because this is the fellowship I want to bring you a de definition of. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Now the word fellowship here uh, means uh, a participation. It means a uh, partnership. A bene uh, uh, that means you're a benefactor of something, uh, of the fellowship, of the relationship uh, between you and God. There's where our true fellowship is. It's not whether or not we agree uh, on, on earthly things. It's whether or not we agree on heavenly things. Okay? Uh, it's translated uh, communicate. Uh, uh, it's communicate, communion, uh, distribution, fellowship. So now, whenever we look at that, where is our fellowship? Our fellowship is we can only have fellowship on an earthly uh, plane between each other when we truly have fellowship with God. Now, you say, well, I know. But, but I'm going to tell you, I've noticed uh, something in, in uh, 71 years of life uh, that many times our earthly uh, fellowships can be broken. They can be uh, you know, disannulled by, by uh, improper behavior, imp improper use or whatever. Uh, there, there was a... Uh, a book one time about uh, the purpose, about, about purpose. Uh, and you know, when you understand the purpose of something, uh, then you're able to uh, function with that purpose. Uh, a friend of mine one time made an uh, uh, a, a example of that uh, thing, and he said, uh, you know, when, when VCRs first came out, and he got one, and, and uh, he was trying to operate it, but uh, he didn't understand the function because uh, he didn't really understand all the, all the purpose. But once he understood the purpose, he read the book, read the manual, he began to understand uh, how to, to cause the thing to function. If you don't understand the purpose of something, you're going to, uh, you know, there was much more on it than just plugging it in and playing it on the television. There was recording ability, there was uh, dubbing ability, there were many different things that he could do with that uh, that he didn't understand. Now, now today, uh, the technology of, technologies go way over. My my uh, five year old probably knows more about some of the technologies that uh, that go on uh, because they the purpose was designed so they could do their gaming, so they could do their communicating, and those things. So there's fellowship whenever you know the purpose. And so now, the fundamentals. If we don't understand the fundamentals. That's just like we're talking about communicating now and fellowshipping, communicating. Uh, for example, uh, if you never learn your ABCs, you're not going to understand uh, about forming your words. You're not going to be able to do uh, a, a, a college-level uh, English paper uh, if you can understand what I'm saying. So uh, whenever we begin to understand the fundamentals, uh, you know, I, I can't say I was... 
uh, thrilled about school when I was there, but I'm going to tell you on this side, I'm glad I went to school and glad I learned uh, my ABCs. I'm glad I learned uh, many. I'm even glad I pushed myself beyond uh, just those grade levels and, and, and did the, the college level stuff and then on into Bible college. Uh, why is that important? Somebody say, well, you don't need all that. Well, you don't. You, you don't. You can function. You can serve God. You can do. Uh, but you know what? It gives you skills and brings you to the place that you can discern and understand. See, there's a thing that our understanding being fruitful uh, in the things of God. So uh, as we come together today, that's the place. First of all, our fellowship has got to be in Him. Why? Because that's where we learn the things of God in Him, and we'll we'll touch more on that. Uh, but uh, back to the latter part of verse two said, "And bear witness and show unto unto you that the that that eternal life." What's He showing? He's showing unto us eternal life, not just what is to come in a sweet by and by, but eternal life is being taught to us, and we're learning eternal life right here. Uh, in what somebody called the nasty now and now. Right now, we learn the principles of eternal life. Uh, amen. So, and then back into verse 3, where we learn about the fellowship uh, with the Father and with the Son. Now, you got something on, on any of that yet? Amen. Uh, and, and, and these things, verse 4, says, And these things write out unto you, that your joy may be full. Now, I like that. I've read that before. But I really like that because that's a desire. I, I do I have to say there's some days my joy isn't full. Uh, but uh, that's my desire, that I walk fully in the joy of the Lord. How do you do that? You do that whenever you walk in that fellowship or in that relationship uh, with God, uh, and I believe with each other. When, whenever we are in fellowship with God, then I believe our relationship, our fellowship with each other goes to another level. Uh, so, so uh, how many want, raise your hand, how many want, want your joy to be full? Amen. I want that with everything's in me, my joy to be full and not just half-heartedly. You know, I remember uh, as a young boy when I got born again and then as I uh, become, uh, in, began to enjoy fellowship on a higher level and when I could talk about the relationship I had with God and we, we uh, fellowship and there was a joy in our salvation there was a joy that we rejoiced whenever uh, souls would come into the kingdom of God and people would become born again uh, there was a joy and we we were thrilled about what God was doing and when lives would be changed because of the word of God now in verse 5 it says this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that that God is light. Now listen to this. God is light. Light sim symbolizing to me understanding. God is light. God brings us or enlightens us to His purpose, His fellowship, His will. And God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. Now, I, I have to say I've seen evidence many times, and especially um, in this season we're in, uh, that people really don't care, uh, that, that a lot of people really don't care about walking in the light of God. They don't care about uh, some of the things that are set forth in the Word of God, and they think it's okay. Well, I'm, you know, I know, you know the people I'm fellowshipping with, uh, you know, there there's some, some dark things in them, but I'm going to fell, I choose to fellowship anyhow. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, in him, he says, is no darkness at all. That means when darkness comes, when darkness comes at me, and it does at times, tries to come at me and, and, and tries to, to bring deception, tries to bring uh, things. But I want to tell you uh, that, that my fellowship is in the light. So now, I have to remember, in him is no darkness at all. Whenever we accept any grain or any seed of of darkness, then uh, it pollutes the whole thing. You know, I, I have this image in my mind uh, of, a, of a glass of water and, and uh, somebody coming along and, and, and pouring just a little bit of uh, uh, poison, strychnine, something in it, 
you know, and and I'm and, and uh, you know I'm not going to pick that water up then and drink it. Why? Because although most of the water, probably 99% of the water, may be uh, clear and, and good, that little bit that's dropped in there. Uh, just picture it like this, though. Uh, picture somebody coming and, and, and pouring uh, motor oil in it. You know, and it's obvious black and, and, and dirty and, and, and filthy then. Uh, you're not going to pick it up and drink it. But see, the, the deception of the enemy sometimes brings us to that place. But see, in him, him is no darkness at all. That's the fundamental of knowing truth. No darkness can exist where the light of God is. See, in him was light. Back to John 1. Uh, the Gospel of John 1 again. In him was light, and the light was the light of men. Now how much darkness was in him? Zero. No darkness in Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and the light was the light of men. That pure light that came out of Jesus Christ was the light of men. That's the light that he's given you and that he's given me. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. Now, I didn't say that. It's written in the book. If we say we, we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness. In other words, if we accept a path uh, that is in darkness and we walk in that path, the path is the, the way you walk, and we walk in that path, uh, then we're walking in darkness. If we say... Uh, Say we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. See, uh, truth is not just something, that, well, that, 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 that's true and that's good, but we pass it off. Truth is something we walk in. In fact, He is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So truth is Jesus Christ Himself. If we walk in Him, if we live in Him, if we move in Him and have our being in Him, uh, then we're walking in truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now say that, one with another. See, there's something, if I'm walking in truth, you're walking in truth, guess what? It brings us into fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, nothing else, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son cleanses us from all sin. I believe that. See, that fellowship that we walk in with Him and with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. I hear this little song. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? And see, that's the place we want to, we want to walk in that place where we are washed, we're cleansed, uh, by the blood of the Lamb. What can take away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. See, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Through that blood of Jesus Christ. That's, that's really to me a shouting territory there that, that through His blood He's cleansed us from all unrighteousness. He's washed away our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and the Word of God is not in us. Now what does that mean? Uh, yes, we have all lived in that place uh, where sin uh, abounded in our life. But then grace come along and now because of His sacrifice, because He became sin for us, we became the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Now that that really, uh, that concludes that chapter uh, and there's you know many more things we're going to pick up on as we come into 2021. But I believe it's time that we uh, begin to enjoy, discern truth and light and let it live big in us that you and I can be everything that God desires for us to be. Cheryl, you got something? Nope, you're doing great. Keep going. <laughs> I can't believe you. I, I want to go into a prophetic word now if, uh, uh, and, and share with you. Uh, this morning I sat down at my computer and I just began to 
to meditate on the, these scriptures and meditate on where we're going. And as I've already said, we want to go into the fundamentals of, uh, of the gospel of the kingdom. We want to go into the fundamentals of salvation and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the doctrines of Christ that the, the, that the scripture refers about. Uh, the doctrine of Christ that the scripture refers uh, to. And I, I sat down and wrote some things. And this is this is to the body of Christ. This is relevant. This is a rhema uh, for us to hear uh, God's intention and, and where we are today. Uh, today there is an impending uh, trumpet sound that is gathering all of our lives to unite in a corporate oneness. Can, did, did you hear that? Now, I'm going I'm to comment as I go through this. It's also posted, if you go back just a, a post or two on, on my page there, you should be able to find this uh, where I wrote it down. But there's a corporate oneness. There's a oneness with the Father, a oneness with Jesus Christ that we can only come to uh, when, it, when it's a corporateness, whenever we're one body. Uh, let me just break it down. Uh, we are the body of Christ. We are one in the Lord. We're joined together as one body, one people. And there's a trumpet sound. The trumpet sound simply, for those of you that may not know types and shadows, the trumpet symbolizes a message uh, going forth in the earth today. I can see it. I can hear it. Although we are in a, this whole earth today uh, is in a place where we are being kept, uh, kept away from each other and separate and and in many cases, and even going into Thanksgiving in many states and many places, uh, they are uh, encouraging us not to meet for uh, Thanksgiving. And, and uh, you know, and part of that uh, really hinders our coming together. Uh, but, you know, there's a spiritual coming together. I believe right now, as you listen to this word, whether you're in the U.S. or whether you're in Pakistan or whether you're in uh, Thailand or Russia or China or wherever you are in the earth, and I could keep going Africa, all over the world. Uh, the Spirit of God is moving. As Cheryl already said earlier, uh, the glory of the Lord, is, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is filling the earth as the waters cover the sea. But there's a corporate oneness. When we can come together in agreement and in fellowship with God, a clear sound is expected from the church. You hear that? A clear sound is expected from the church in order to gather uh, the incoming harvest. We must have a clear understanding of God's uh, purpose and ways, not, not remaining in tradition. Now listen, there's, there's a list of things here that I think have hindered us from coming into our corporate oneness, into coming into in, in the body. If you look just on the surface and you look at all the denominations, you look at the different people that divide, people divide over, uh, over doctrines, they divide over... Um, uh, you know, different doctrinal beliefs. They divide over race. They divide over many different things. Uh, but, uh, but we have to conclude that God is not going to be divided. He is not divided. The body of Christ is one, and we have need of each other. Uh, uh, not remaining in tradition. Our traditions uh, hinder us from, from being free in God, from entering into that uh, oneness and that agreement. Our, our traditions... Uh, make them not affect the Word of God. So we got to get beyond our traditions, you know. Uh, well, Grandpa didn't preach it like that, and so on and so on. But we got to be, get beyond our traditions and take the pure Word of God and say, okay, God, let that Word of God, that engrafted Word, begin to live big in us as the body, uh, the many-membered body of Christ. Uh, our comfort, you know, it, it's just comfortable for me just to, you know, many people agree with everything that comes down the pike because they want to be comfortable. They don't want to rock the boat. I'm, uh, to be honest, that that's kind of my nature. I want to, well, I'm, you know, uh, turn around and get away from it. Uh, you know, I don't like debate and and, and and arguing and that stuff like that. Uh, but you know what? There comes a time that you got to stand up uh, for what God's God's saying. The, uh, you know, the, the disciples, think about the early uh, apostles whenever, uh, uh, during the book of Acts, whenever uh, it began to get hard. Well, think about Jesus. Whenever it began to get hard, they didn't uh, give up and quit and say, well, it must not be, it's not working, so I just quit. No, they stood even in the face of death, and some, many, even suffered death 
uh, in modernism uh, because uh, they would not stop and hold back the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and, and lifelessness. You know, there's such a lifelessness, I think, in what we've called the church today uh, and, and those that have called themselves Christian all over, of all persuasions. Uh, the, the, a lifelessness. There, there, there has to be an, an in, uh, injection. <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Uh, there has to be a, a, an, an infusion, if you will, of life, the life of God, the life of the Word uh, into the body of Christ. Holy Spirit is extending an invitation to the body of Christ to unite. That's what I'm, I'm voicing today. Holy Spirit is giving us the body of Christ an invitation to unite. Now, I'm not talking about uniting in doctrine. Doctrines have caused us to be so fragmented that the power that we should be having in the earth uh, has been very uh, minute. But see, here, uh, Holy Spirit is uh, inviting the body of Christ to unite, allowing Holy Spirit to in enlighten and awaken us from our sleep. I think about uh, the book of Matthew whenever, <clears throat> excuse me, it talks about, I think it's the 25th chapter, uh, where it talks about the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. Uh, the five foolish slept and didn't put, uh, didn't, all of them slept and didn't put, uh, didn't put oil in their lamps, uh, but then whenever the trumpet sounded, I told you earlier, uh, there's an impounding tr uh, 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 impending trumpet sound uh, that is calling us together to unite as the body of Christ has never united before. Uh, to enlighten us and awaken us from our sleep. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. That's Ephesians 5 and 14. Uh, it's an honor to be alive and quickened. Say that quickened. I just felt something in my spirit say yes. It's an honor to be alive and quickened today uh, by the Holy Spirit to live and witness the unveiling of God's purpose for His creation. The emerging of the corporate man. I want you to hear what I'm saying. You know, there was a period of time in our, in my ministry, in, in the, the circles I was in, whenever God was driving that home, that we are a corporate, uh, the, there's a corporate anointing, there's a, a corporate uh, uh, power in the earth that if we never unite, if we never come together in agreement, uh, then we never experience the full power of what God desires to display in the earth. But whenever we as the corporate body of Christ come together, uh, guess what? Something begins to happen uh, and, and the powers of hell begin to back up. And I believe that's what uh, God's calling for today. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit is inviting us to come into that place. Uh, again, it is an honor uh, to be alive and quickened by the Holy Spirit to live and witness the unveiling of God's purpose uh, for his creation, the emerging of the corporate man, the perfect man, unto the statue of the fullness of Christ, to the, this corporate man is a compound of individuals. Listen to me. You say, well, I, I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just me. Well, uh, God wants to use the just you. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm just me, God. I don't, I don't feel like I'm... But see, God quickens me and, and, and challenges me by the Holy Spirit uh, that, that, that the individual you are can be joined together with other individuals that believe in God that are one in the Lord and be a part of that uh, corporate body of Christ. Individuals that have, un, have an understanding of the times to know what to do. See, there's the thing. People are confused. Why? Because they don't have discernment. They don't have understanding of the times. And they don't know what to do. Well, what do I do? Well, let me tell you. This is what Holy Ghost is saying to me. That we need to come together in a oneness in the body of Christ. In a corporate man, if you will. Uh, that that anointing of God be multiplied in the earth. Uh, 
They are preparing to be the habitation of God. See, there's one thing in the fundamentals that sometimes we forget uh, that it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Where is the kingdom of God? We're so focused on the kingdom uh, that, that we, we think is coming uh, in another time that we forsake uh, the kingdom of God that is operating in the earth today. Uh, they are preparing to be a habitation of God. They are being fully conformed into His image. There's the thing uh, that we must yield ourselves to, a corporate people. Yielding into the image of God. <clears throat> Their lives and ministries are focused, <clears throat> directed, and purposed. Directed, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, lost one. Directed and purposed to fulfill their place and destiny in to be a part of this overcoming. Watch what he, watch what I'm saying here. Watch what Holy Spirit said to me this morning. Uh, part of this overcoming, glorious, mature church which will establish the kingdom of God. Now, there's, there's some big words in there. Overcoming. <laughs> that's a big word. Uh, because that's exactly how the book of Revelation describes us. Uh, overcoming. Glorious, mature church. Amen. Amen. He desires to, 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 to have for Himself a glorious church without spot and without wrinkle. He desires to have for Himself a, a, a mature church uh, that will establish God's kingdom. Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's our guide and life. Is present to, em, to embrace those that with the desire to enter into the third realm of God's purpose. There's another realm of God's purpose. And it seems like we've been stuck here for a while. Why? Because we can't enter into that realm until there's a oneness in the body, until there's a coming together of the body, that we can begin to, to that, that corporate body begins to function in the earth uh, as one, as God has instructed and God has designed us to. Uh, he wants to he wants to birth vision and ministry in lives that have uh, have given themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our our goal, our goal. Now listen to me. Coming into 2021, our goal is to be instrumental in releasing you into your full potential and outflow of ministry, and help guide you into a relationship with the Word of God, so that I, out of you will burst forth rivers of living water. Now, uh, let, let, me, let me just comment on that la a little bit on that last verse uh, before we conclude today. Uh, there is The Word of God is not just something I read and then I just throw down on the coffee table and say, well, uh, you know, that was real, a real good inspirational word today. No, there's a relationship with that Word. Whenever... <clears throat> You know, whenever we come to uh, that place where, uh, well, if we need healing, guess what? We don't need just something to, that they're written in a book. We need a relationship with the healer. We need uh, we need a relationship with that one that uh, has paid the price and taken stripes on his back for our healing. So, uh, as we enter into this understanding now, our goal, my goal. Uh, is to help bring you something that will help usher you uh, into that place of oneness, that corporate anointing, uh, where now out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your innermost being begins to burst forth rivers of living water. Not just accusations of man, not just divisions, uh, but out of us. So out of our belly, out of our innermost being, uh, I pray that God will take us, uh, starting today, uh, let, God will take us to that place that we can flow into uh, a, a place of unity. John 17, that we can flow into a place of power. I, all power is given unto Him, Jesus Christ, 
in heaven and in earth. And now in His name we go forth and we function in that power uh, in the fundamentals of what He's already given us. Well, I hope I've said something today that would uh, inspire you and there's a challenge. And I, I want to repeat again that there's an invitation coming forth to the church, to the body of Christ today. That we enter into a corporate oneness. Enter into a singleness of mind. Into a place where that we are rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, and, and we've come to the place where He's the one that's fighting our battles. We're not fighting in, our, in ourselves. We're not fighting it against flesh and blood. But we're fighting uh, with, with, with spiritual weapons of our warfare. And we believe that God is doing a mighty work. I want to pray with you before we leave today. Cheryl, anything in closing you want? To... No. You just covered everything. Oh, my. Uh, well, we're, we're just getting started. Believe me, she'll, she'll have more to say in the days to come. And uh, so as we go off the air today, you know, I, I feel such a connection. I know we're on, I know we're on, uh, on technology. I know we're on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And I know it's video. And, and uh, but... Right now it's live, and, and so as we pray today, I just feel a connection with the body. I, f I feel like there's a there, there's such Holy Spirit is allowing me to feel and sense your presence uh, in the Word, your presence in Him. We are in Him, and and this this room, this room of Him. In my Father's house are many, and the word mansions there is actually. You break it down, it says rooms. In my Father's house are many rooms. In His room, uh, glory to God, the, uh, uh, there are many rooms, many places. And in this place, I sense and feel Your presence. I feel us coming together. I feel a uniting. I feel God's God setting the stage to bring us, bring us together. And you know, there's many negative things going on in the earth. But I'm going to tell you, huh, we're one in the Lord. We're joined together. We're one body. And I want to ask you, body of Christ, come on, rise up, awake, and be who God's called you to be. There's an awakening that God's calling us into. And let's be there. I want to pray right now for you that you're going through, those that are going through physical battles, those that are going through mental battles, those that are going through any kind of financial battles, whatever battle you're going through, I'm going to tell you, Jesus uh, has already provided the answer. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, as Cheryl and I agree together, and as we reach out into this uh, video audience today, we ask you, Lord, that you just touch people. God, that you heal. Uh, God, that you bring salvation. God, just even just simple salvation, calling on the name of the Lord, believing in on the name of the Lord, and confessing with our mouth. God, the Lord Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that you bring us into a full place of benefit in the kingdom of God. Lord, I also ask you, uh, today, God, that you heal physical bodies, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you uh, paid the price to heal physical bodies, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, uh, that you heal arthritis, that you heal, heal uh, tumors in the body. God, I thank you, Lord, that, that tumors uh, cannot live in a Holy Ghost body. And I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, uh, that you bring to a manifestation, God, healing, Father. Uh, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name now that you bring... Uh, healing all over the world, uh, the parts of the body of Christ. And I give you praise, I give you thanks, I give you honor for what you're doing here today, God. Every need be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thanks once again for joining us today. And uh, we will be on uh, probably increasingly as we come uh, through the end of the year and into the, into the new year. I know it's just November. But there's a preparation of the Spirit that's calling us together. A oneness corporate body. And I feel your I feel your oneness. I feel your connection. And let's walk forward in it. Love you. God bless you. Thanks again for letting us come into your home. In Jesus' name.